Become a member of the National At Home Dad Network, an organization focused on providing advocacy, community, education, and support. Connecting with households where dad is the primary caregiver of the children. We do this through our webinar and podcast series, mental health support groups, regular online social events, as well as our annual convention. The National At Home Dad Network is a 100% volunteer organization. Without the generous support of its members and the community around it, we would not be able to continue the work that we do. Becoming a member gives you access to past convention speaker presentations, the ability to vote for board members annually, and ensures that the organization's fees and bills are in positive standing. Oh yeah, it should not go unmentioned that there is some cool swag headed your way if you decide to become a member. For only $35 a year, your membership provides you with the exclusive content only we can generate, and you'll be supporting an organization that benefits families all around the country and world. By advocating for them, offering them community, providing education and guidance, and supporting them to grow in their parenthood journey. And one last thing, if you contribute $500 or more, you will become a lifetime member. Not only will you receive everything already mentioned, but also a certificate recognizing your status and an exclusive National At Home Dad Network challenge coin with our trademark logo, Dads Don't Babysit. So what are you waiting for? Become a member today. Welcome to Home Dad Chat, brought to you by the National At Home Dad Network. My name is Brock. My name is Danny. And we are here to talk about life as stay at home dad. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. No, I don't want much. I even love handmade crafts made of macaroni. Come on now, you should know me. Sometimes I might eat too much. No worry about my weight. Got the dad bod rocking on me. Sketches on my feet. Cargo shorts look good on me. I'm a dad, that's what I do. You just have to admit it. Danny's right. It always makes it better. Welcome to the show. Danny said I should hit record. <laughs> <laughs> here we are talking just off on our own. Danny's like, you this need to hit record. So here we are. We should record this because everything we're talking about is stuff that I think other dads would want to know about. I know, you know. I know. It'll be fun. Hey, but that's all part of the show anyway. I mean, people like it because it's just two guys talking with microphones. So oh, I man. hope so because that's about all you're going to get. Sorry. That's all you're going to get. Well, man, anyway. Yeah. So uh, what we were talking about before that was the fact that I'm in the process of possibly getting a fun part-time job just based off of going and talking to uh, a local company. So um, well, yeah, a, another fun part-time job, right? Another, well, <laughs> is this really right. part-time? What? <laughs> I don't that, know, man. Is that what I you call it? Consider, that's, it's not a <laughs> hobby. That's you true. Know, that's true. It's not a hobby. This right. is, it's would, in some way community service. I would consider in a way. That. So okay. we're, I don't know. Okay. I'd call it at least a part time job. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, that. Write it down, man. Podcast. Link in that thing. Yeah. yeah link in totally. it and resume it. And Sorry. All I those was, things you people who are young enough to need a job. I'm just opening up my bottle of Eagle Rare that I just got in the mail. Nice. Nice. <laughs> and we, we talked about it already, but I am drinking a, uh, a mixture of uh, lemon Italian ice and Oh, nice. Nice pop. And uh, diet Sprite, Sprite Zero, actually. It sounds it really just, tasty. It is really good, you know, and no alcohol in it, which is actually fine for me because I will be diabetic in the next year or two. I can tell I'm not going to stop that. eating like all the no, it's coming. I got to I got to curtail my sugar. I have, I'm addicted to sugar, man. You're sweet, man. What can I say? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I but no, I would, but yeah, so no, I was just talking about the fact that so I got asked, I got yeah. asked to uh, tell the to, whole story. Yeah. yeah. So I, and I can actually talk about this, which is really cool. So I got asked to be a part of a day of basically craft, craft spirits. It's the second annual Ohio craft uh, whiskey festival. And it takes place like five minutes from my house uh, here in Cincinnati this year. And so one of the guys from the dad ass podcast, which we'll be talking more about them in the future. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> in some way, form, or fashion. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm excited about that. But um, Matt Lofi, uh, one of the co-hosts for the show, um, he and I have gotten to be talking back and forth. I went and hung out with him up in Columbus a few weeks ago. And he was like, hey, man, he's like, 
Um, Sean's not going to be able to come down to Cincinnati. Would you want to join me for a day of podcasting at the festival? And I was like, what? Like a full day of podcasting. And he was like, yeah, he's like, we're going to have a booth and we get to interview distillers and like people that are attending and talk to them about parenthood and like what their favorite cocktails are and like all this other stuff. And I'm like, dude, that sounds like a freaking blast. You don't have to twist my arm. <laughs> yes. I'm right? in. <laughs> and so I've been going to the distillery every once in a while, talking with their marketing people, which is stuff that I've been doing with the organization for like the past mm -hmm. three or four years, but to get a sit down in person with some of these, with somebody and talk with them and get to know them a little bit was really cool. At last time I was there, he gave me like a full on like tour of Karakin and um, we walked around the whole distillery, showed me all kinds of really cool stuff. And then was like, Hey, let's do some fun content. And I said, yeah, that's kind of what I came here for along with, you know, getting a free cup of coffee. Uh, <laughs> Cause he's got yeah, a yeah. cop. They have a coffee roaster like inside the place too. So it's like, they're nice. doing, you know, they're distilling spirits. They're making beer. Um, they're making a, a couple craft sodas and then they have uh, a coffee roaster here in town in their facility as well. So it's just, I mean, all Sweet. that plus food, it's like the place to go. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So anyway, what he did was he's like, let's drill into a barrel and let's get a taste right out of a barrel. And I'm well, like, righty then. I'm yeah. like, dude, this is like <laughs> part of my bucket list. I've never done this before. And so I was there with one of their master distillers and, you know, they drill into it and they fill up uh, probably a quarter of the way of like a pitcher of uh, like almost like a beer pitcher or whatever. And then he goes and like pours it all into like really nice, like rocks glasses for everybody and stuff mm -hmm. and it's basically what's going to become their uh, very first bonded barrel um, they have the ability to do bonded which takes specific your specific federal elements involved in being able to have a bonded barrel okay and so and they what benefit is that to them or to you or to I mean, what's the so not every distillery mean? not every distillery puts out a bonded which is a mm -hmm. uh, four-year-old brought a four-year-old bourbon that comes out at a hundred proof. Ooh. Yeah. Already. <laughs> yeah. So in it, yeah, and the, we're light and that on fire. <laughs> oh, a hundred's nothing, man. I drink like Oof. I've got ones way more than that. I mean, coming straight out of the, uh, if you get like a full, like a full proof, for instance, like I've got a full proof of uh, benchmark. It's 125 proof. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's too much for me. I think, I don't know. Well, I mean, the one that, the one that we got the old elk is I think 114. Is it? Uh-huh. It was 11.4. You know what? Numbers. So yeah. I'm not as impressed as, as I, as I, I sounded, I was, I was trying uh, to be fine. funny now. But anyway, so, so I went there and we did this whole tour thing and, and yeah. I sat down with him and I was like, Hey, listen, like, you know, I know I'm doing some publicity for the festival and i really enjoy coming here i'm curious with my background working for the local tour place that does like brewery brewery and distillery tours would you have a place on your marketing team for me to help you with your tiktok account because that's something that they don't do a ton with and he was like you know we don't really have like a budget but I would love to see you come in and be like a tour guide on the weekends. And then like mm -hmm. also, you know, have a place with taking on the TikTok account. And then we kind of see where things go. And I'm just like, all right, foot in the door. Like we'll get, you know, we will uh, reconvene after the festival yeah. <laughs> and yeah. see where this thing goes. Cause I'm like, like we're talking noon to four o'clock on Saturdays and Sundays, which is perfect. Go over, give some tours, hang out, shoot some content. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really help hopefully get things moving along for them. So I'm excited because those are the things that I've really become passionate with, um, which is just learning about bourbon, learning about just the distilling process and then sharing it with other people. So, yeah. Nice. And that's yeah. a great opportunity too, not only for you, but also for the company. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's definitely a win-win. Uh, on, on both sides, especially because right. you mentioned they're really not doing anything, not doing as much as they can with TikTok, like a lot of the other stores and distilleries really are using every social media and TikTok's kind of a new one for a lot of, well, a lot of us old people. Right. So, well, and the funny thing is, and that's is the other thing, this is why you were like, hit record. Cause we were talking about this. 
Yeah. There is a guy up out of Columbus who's known as a bourbon dad on TikTok. And if you're on TikTok, go follow him. Great content. But the thing with it was is that he got a hold of a bottle of watershed distillery uh, bourbon from them. And it was a very specific bottle. It was a, a like a limited release. And he did a, some content on it. And they reached out to him. And they inv- he's, I think his like part time or his job at that time was like being a like contractor or something like that. But it's you know middle of pandemic, not everybody. I mean, materials are expensive, so he's yeah. not really getting a whole lot of work. It doesn't seem like it. And so they invite him in to do to be a tour guide on the weekends. And so not only do you get to come to that distillery and get knowledge from somebody at their you know on a tour, but you're also mm-hmm. getting to meet a pseudo like celebrity because i mean his tiktok account just went and blew up like ten thousand followers it was insane um nice. and so and his mom's on tiktok too which is hilarious so he's known as a bourbon dad and she's known as a bourbon mom <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> which is great nice. and she calls everybody that's like in the tiktok uh bourbon tiktok community her children so mm-hmm. it's really funny Sweet. but so he's working for them as a tour guide and you know months later i don't know maybe even like a year later i'm not even sure but just recently he posted that he was transitioning out of being a tour guide and i reached out to him on the side i'm like what are you doing man and yeah, where are you uh, going? he's staying within the house only he's moving into sales and doing stuff with them in that reps respect and i'm just like awesome so like mm-hmm. i get to actually meet him in person at the festival because he's going to be there for with watershed and uh i mean it's just all these things it's like who would have thought that starting up a TikTok account and just like talking about your life or talking about bourbon would get you possibly into a job, you know, mm-hmm. or part-time job or whatever it is that just feeds into your passion, which is the thing that I love to tell dads about is like, don't, don't fret or like pull back from your passion of something of sharing it because you never know, like someone catches on to it. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, well, you're living it. <laughs> and the number of people that, are interested in what you're interested in, right? You know, that, that they want to see how you're genuinely excited about, I don't know, trains, whatever, you mm-hmm. know, whatever it is. If I had a great love, if I was a train enthusiast, I probably would talk about it because that's what I do. I can't stop talking, but realistically, I would never expect, well, I'll do a TikTok about trains or whatever, and anybody to really respond. It would be something that I'd be doing for myself because it's passion, you know, right. Yeah. It's, it's what, you know, we've been dealing, talking with a lot of organizations, especially with nonprofits about it's a passion thing. Whatever you're doing is it's because of you, your love for it, but there are plenty of other people who love whatever you love right. for the most part, Yeah, you know, and bourbon is like, I mean, come on, that's, yeah. it, it, that is a dad drink without, mm-hmm. even if you're, if you're sober, if you, if someone says, what kind of person drinks bourbon? Well, dads drink bourbon. Yeah. I mean, have you ever seen your dad drink bourbon? Uh, well, I mean, no, but I mean, it's like grilling. It's just like there, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's when you're, when you're, uh, when you're young, it's probably beer, you know, hey, dad wants a beer, but as you kind of advance and you can, you can make things more available for your family and for yourself, then you go to bourbon. Like, yeah, right. exactly. When you slow Pro down a little bit, you enjoy you just slow sitting. down a little bit, <laughs> Yeah, slow down a little bit. You enjoy sitting and sipping and having a conversation. Right. Yeah. Yep. Well, I, I was li- actually, it was funny because I was listening to uh, 700 WLW today and we don't have a total wine around here. Like the closest mm-hmm. one is in Indianapolis. Okay. And uh, it's funny because they had a commercial for total wine and the, in the commercial, it was, it was basically them selling bourbon to kid, like, you know, selling bourbon as like a father's day gift, like, Hey kid, Hey, you know, Hey adult kid, like, don't forget to get your dad that barrel pick of bourbon bottle that he really likes kind of deal. And the funny part about it was like in the commercial, the, um, the kid gives the bottle to him and, uh, he's like, Oh, it, you're, or you, you were always my favorite or something like that. And they go, (laughs) Oh, thanks dad. And he's like, no, I was talking about the bottle. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, Oh my gosh. Like that was some great marketing writing right there. (laughs) That is perfect dad. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, just all that. Well, even too. So other guys that have gone and taken their passions, um, to other places, you've got, uh, Greg Washington, and the things that yeah. he has done with the Booze Brothers is awesome. You know, Friday nights 
on YouTube. You can, you know, basically participate in the whole talk, which is fun because you can text and message back and forth and stuff. And they talk mm -hmm. about all kinds of things, but you learn a lot about beer from them. Yeah. And they, and they bring on so many different people and it's very diverse and they talk about diverse topics as well. And I, it's a, like when I get the opportunity to actually sit down and watch it, it's always fun because most of the guys on there are people that I know too. So, and yeah, you know, yeah. I got to actually be on one of the shows a while back and that was a lot of fun. And it's just literally like, Hey, like, here's what I'm drinking and talking about it. And I mean, it's all virtual. Mm -hmm. So it's like just yeah. telling the notes and stuff. So Greg started that up and he's been going full bore with it. It's been really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have Joe Saladino and the sad, the, what is it? The, um, Sad beer cast. Sad beer cast. Wow, man. He's going to kill me for not remembering that. Uh, <laughs> That's okay, Joe. You're my favorite. Oh, crikey. Just saying. So yeah, the sad beer cast um, with Joe and Jacob, like they've really taken that to like a whole new level because it was just the two of them in a garage talking mm -hmm. or the other one that's really funny is their quick reviews that they do literally by like Jacob's trash can outside of his garage, which I I've, I've <laughs> yeah. been there for that, which is always, <laughs> that was hilarious. Like when I visited him last year, but, yeah, and you're like, we're, we're going to do it right here. I mean, I guess it's fine. It's a podcast. Yeah. And, you know, they'll, they'll video it too. They, they do, you know, video for their shoes, but realistically it's just a podcast. So you, it's audio only mainly, but still. Yeah. You get the, video, you get the, well, you get the video with, with the Instagram when he does the quick review. So that's the fun mm -hmm. part with that. And, but on top of that though, like they've come to partner with all these big breweries and, and small breweries out there. And they're very well known with those breweries and getting to be more well known because they've really pushed in on, Hey, like we actually have something to bring. Yes, we are in a small little corner, but we have a lot to bring. And, you know, Joe is using a lot of what he's learned and who he has like come in contact with to also do some very interesting things with like the beer share for home da for home dad con. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to go into any great detail on that. Cause like, there's a lot of things that I don't think I'm allowed to share because of just what they're right. doing, but members only, come but on. they're, but they're busting, they're busting their butts to do some really cool stuff with that. So, mm -hmm. you know, those are, those are the ones that I've seen most recently in those realms but there's mm -hmm. so many others like there's you know yeah you've like what well, do you know you know robbie samuels i, I do you at least know his name yeah and he's yeah. been around for a while and he was at uh raleigh years and years ago and what he's done basically to market himself over something he enjoys right. which is zoom calls and presentations and building networks and things like that which one he's just naturally good at he right? saved our ass. But yes, that's it. He went, he's <laughs> like, not doing it for himself. I mean, I'm sure he's getting benefits out of it. I'm, I guarantee he's getting benefits out of it. But he does it oh, because yeah. it's a passion, because he wants to help people, because he wants to bring people together or bring them to a new place in their business or whatever. You know, you want to write a book or whatever it is. He's helping people. Right. You know, and he but does he, it because he loves it. And he's he, just darn good at it. He is. And he also just knows how to like, be like, Oh, you want to do this? Like, let's elevate it to that. Like, you know, we came to him mm -hmm. with the idea of like, Hey, we have this idea for a virtual event. And, but none of us had a, a clue on how to like really make it functionable. It was like, yeah. we had all the parts, but it was like, we couldn't put the machine together. And then we got him on a call and he immediately was like, Oh yeah. Like we'll do this, 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 and this. And I remember getting off of the call with him and all of us being in the, in the zoom call afterwards and looking at each other and going, Oh my gosh, like we wouldn't have been able to have done that. Like not right. Be, and it yeah. wasn't so much of just the like know-how, but it was the execution of it and just mm -hmm. all the moving parts. And then he comes in and he's basically like the glue that puts it all together. And mm -hmm. it was honestly like one of the major catalysts for why dad con at home in 2020 was such a success yeah because he 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 ran the show for us while we did all the other little parts to it mm -hmm. and i cannot thank him enough for him coming in and doing that for us it was awesome right, right. and while he's you know he is doing his thing he's making money with it whatever Again, it's his passion. It's yeah. a thing. He's like, well, what can I do with this? And, you know, it was, it started out with just as Zoom calls when 
I mean, most of us, well, I know what a Zoom call is. My kid does that for school, right? You know, but the reality of how very important it was to be able to be on a Zoom call, to give a presentation, the the difference between an in-person convention and what mm-hmm. you get out of it, and then being able to try to do that virtually. I'm, you know, I wasn't on the board at the time. I don't know anything about what went on behind the scenes or anything like that, but I can just imagine how daunting that was oh yeah and to pull it off so well i mean yeah. it was a team effort for sure oh yeah i don't know without robbie i <laughs> i don't know if we, it would have even happened really it was he was just so instrumental but back to the point because he loves helping people right you can just tell it when you talk to him mm-hmm. you know yeah so, definitely i mean he was so another example he was uh basically doing like these Friday late afternoon, um, like happy hours, happy hour. too, yeah, yeah. which was Zoom really calls. cool. Cause like you could just jump on one and like learn some things. And it was like yeah. these little mini Ted talks. Um, and then also like some really cool networking. Like I remember talking with somebody from like Australia and like somebody from like England all at the same time. Like he would just like put you in a room with random people and be like, here, you got 10 minutes, like get to know each other. And it was like so yeah. much fun. If you were an outgoing person, it was yeah, like, if, you're an extrovert. Cool. <laughs> if you were an introvert, you're like, uh, I can't find me a corner in this virtual room. Oops. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, oh, look, my camera and my, my mic camera, went yeah. out suddenly. I don't know what happened. <laughs> exactly. I- <laughs> where, where did that, where did that guy go? Like, he just completely disappeared. Oh, you know, it's it's really funny, but I have because uh, I've been on a lot of Zoom calls over the last couple of years, and there's always a breakout. And it's it's not always, but there's, whenever it's a breakout, they're gonna they're, we're just gonna put some random people in a room like you're talking mm-hmm. about. And every time I go in, and I'm like, okay, are these gonna be extroverts? Are these gonna be introverts? Or is it gonna be a mix? What am I gonna get? And it's so funny because you start out and you know immediately if that other person is going to be an extrovert or an introvert. You know. Yep. And I love it too, because I've gotten in so many really great calls with extroverts and 10 minutes isn't enough, man. We got to keep talking. We got these other, we got great ideas going on. Oh, well, we got to go back. And (laughs) it's, it's amazing. And Robbie took that virtual convention to just a much higher level because of his ability to pull it, you know, here's a breakout session. What do you need? You know, how do we do it? And do you want to do, you know, whatever else, you know, all the stuff that came, that came together for it. Very impressive work. Definitely. Um, but yeah, it was all, com- but it all comes down to his passion for yeah wanting to do that. So, yeah. So that's, you know, and that, and that's the thing with, I find it interesting when you talk to folks uh, just about like, what do dads do? You know, especially like what do at home dads do? And it's like, we do a lot mm-hmm. of different things. Like, honestly, like I talked actually to a lady today who she's 80 years old and um, she started a parents forum. And mm-hmm. so she reached out and just kind of wanted to know about the organization, kind of who we are and what we do. And we had a great conversation. And in the end, she was just like, wow, like, you know, things have changed, you know, in the the time since yeah. she had started that. I think, I think she said that uh, she started the parenting form like 35 years ago or something like that. So, mm-hmm. or 30 years ago, that's what it is. So she was like 50 when she started it. Now she's 80 and she's looking to hand it off to some younger people and stuff. And, mm-hmm. um, but we were just talking about different, different things that I've doing, different things that other dads are doing. And she was very just like, wow, like this is so cool to hear about. And I just think that that's the the one thing that I hope that this podcast and that the organization like does well is just continues to put out those kind of stories of what dads are doing. Cause yeah, there's so much else going on in the media, you know, and unless it's like some big virtual thing, you know, that goes crazy virtual or, or not virtual, but uh, crazy viral. Um, some people don't even hear about it. And, and there's so many mm-hmm. things that dads are doing. So like, I, yeah. I really love the fact that, you know, John Francis was talking about doing, giving back to the community. And I really hope that the local news stations here it pick that stuff up, you know, and really mm-hmm. run with it because those are the stories that people need to be hearing right now. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of other things going on in the world, but like, you know, people need to hear some really positive, <laughs> some positive things going on out yeah. there along with all the other crazy. And then changing the stereotype, which yes. men have been doing that. And, and I, I should say 
the world in general society has been changing that old stereotype and making sure we understand who people really are that anybody can be anything yeah. kind of stuff but getting past for just for our specific little niche of at-home dads or right. dads that are taking care of their children and dads that are there even if it's not full-time but they're very involved fathers and just making it normal, making it mm -hmm. common. Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. My dad stayed home or my dad was always at my games or whatever it is. Pushing that uh, narrative of involvement yeah. and nurturing and caretaking and moving things like Father's Day, which is a great event for the family from let's give dad a tie. And I don't know what else, you know, I don't know what dads get we're used to get stereotypically, but moving it to, well, let's, let's spend some time with some other dads. Yeah. You know, let's go out and figure out what other dads are doing. And, you know, like you said, a community event, can we go do, you know, we've done in the, with the organization, we've done diaper banks, right. which is always a great thing. You know, you can never have enough diapers when your kids are in diapers. So true. Um, it's so true. just, uh, oh my God. So, but being able to offer some help or give some help back and all the organizations that we've talked to over the years at the conventions and such, mm -hmm. um, Minneapolis specifically where it was, is it the fatherhood project that was in Minneapolis? Yeah. I don't remember, yep. man. I'm so sorry, but it's no, been years. That's what it was. It was I've the fatherhood project. Time. No, you're good. Yeah, and that they're talking to young dads who had children very young, who have gone through whatever it's a job loss or it's even criminal activity, things right. that have taken them away from their children and building that, those steps back. And these men are out there doing the work just to be with their kids, yeah, just to spend time, you know, their, their weekend a month or whatever it might be, but getting back to where they can have time with their children, love their children, nurture their children. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Definitely. The organization has done, I think a good solid job year after year after year of helping to build up that understanding of mm -hmm. what dads can be. I would, I would say the one thing that honestly dads can't say anymore. And I'm so happy that they can't say this anymore is that, Oh, there's no help for me or there's nothing there. You know, I don't know who to go to for X, Y, Z thing, because there's either an organization or a person out there who is a, just a simple message away from helping have some sort of conversation, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Like, you know, you've got fatherhood.org or fatherhood.gov actually, um, which I believe was started by uh, President Obama, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then you've got the fatherhood projects that are around and there's most cities have something like that. Like big mm -hmm. cities, a lot of times have, have different programs and things. And that's why a lot of times when, you, you know, for like in my dad's group specifically, I get guys who are just like, I don't know what to do or my kids doing this. Like I saw where actually somebody in the discord channel had posted like, Hey, like, I'm having these issues with speaking to my kid and getting them to like, you know, basically listen to me and mm -hmm. see me as an authority figure and just had a sounding board of people to talk to him mm -hmm. and to give him stuff. And I'm just like between the dad's groups and the dad, co the fatherhood coaches that are out there and the fatherhood organizations that are out there, there is somebody that will not judge you and will listen to you and give you the place safe place to speak and then try to see what can be done to move you forward in a positive way. And mm -hmm. I think it's one of those deals where it's like, if, if you say you, that that doesn't exist, then you are basically denying what's actually already out there. And, yeah. and okay. does that make sense? It does. It does. I don't know. I would say if, if you're not seeing it though, ask somebody, right. It's there. Don't it's, be quiet about it, whatever it might be. Um, and that's uh, just across the board with everything you do as a human being. I think these days, especially with the, yeah, you know, Google and everything else we have, there's a Facebook page for it, or there's a, there's a uh, Instagram for it. There's something where somebody's doing the thing that you're interested in. It's the same thing with dadding, yeah. you know, with being a father I, my kids, you know, my kid's three. That's all you got to say. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, man. 
I'm sorry. It's you, it, it'll get better. Don't worry. You know, <laughs> okay. because you yes. have that immediate, you know, or, you know, they're 18 months and why are they saying no to everything? It's the only word they seem that's all that it is. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's psychological reasons first, why your child is doing this to you. And second, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dads who've been through the same exact thing. Right. And remember their kid doing that to them for, it seemed like a year. Yep. You know, but whatever it might be, there's somebody there that's run into it or that's, that's that has a similar situation that's similar enough to where they can help you up. Yeah. And there's know? great and there's great books out there, too. And the nice part is like, oh, I don't read. I get it. I'm not a huge reader myself. There's some great mm-hmm. audio books out there as well. Yep. And and, you know, from just amazing authors that have lots of, you know, awesome things to say. I mean, Shannon Carpenter, like his book is awesome. You got Catherine mm-hmm. Perlman's books that are out there and, you know, um, you've got Dr. Um, oh golly, what's her name? Animation. Yep. There it is. <laughs> I'm glad I got the first I knew part, who right? you were talking about. I yeah. knew who you were talking about. I hey, man, tell. It's been a day. Okay. It's like a hundred degrees out here. I'm losing my mind. Uh, my brain's melting. But yeah, I mean, just like all these awesome people out there. I mean, there's even um, books for dads who are trying to connect with their teenage kids. Like Mm -hmm. there's a guy by the name of Mark Lamasters that I met through Dad 2.0 that did these awesome books called uh, Friday Night Lights uh, or is like Friday night. Yeah. Friday Night Lights, uh, father and daughter or something like that. And there's one for uh, fathers and sons or whatever, but it's basically Mm -hmm. like 12 or 14 different like activity like date type ideas like hey we're gonna go out and do this and talk about these things because mm-hmm. you think about it like oh i'm gonna go out with my teenager what am i gonna talk to them about like well this book gave the like all these great ideas about it mm-hmm. um and so you know just stuff like that it, there's all these amazing resources out there mm-hmm. that's why like usually around father's day week or father's day like in june and just in, in self i usually try to go to the libraries and push them to put out father uh fatherhood type books on mm-hmm. display because they do it for mother's day i i know they do and they do it for pride and they do it for um you know black history month and everything else and it's like mm-hmm. there's some awesome father's books out there like let's get them yeah. out on the shelves for people <laughs> yeah and i i went and i heard this basically from uh shannon's podcast on the podcast that he's a part of um where they had gone to their local library the dad and house. said, Hey, why is yeah the dad house podcast? Why is, can I get a copy of Shannon Carpenter's the ultimate stay at home dad here yeah. at the library? Can I get one in here where we can, you know, where I can read it, whatever. And doing that on a local level to move that forward. And it was like, well, that's great because that's him and his book. And it's, I think it was somebody's father or his father that had done that for him. Great. But the other part of it is telling the library, Mm-hmm. I want to see more books about how to handle my kids as a dad or how to, you know, yeah. what I need to do. How do I teach my kids to, you know, talking to teenagers, there's so much, that's such treacherous territory yeah. that you can get into with your kids. Well, in his, in his book is a penguin book. So it's published by a large company, mm-hmm. which means that the library is going to go after that book versus it's a lot harder for someone that's self-published to get it in the library, but for like something that's mm-hmm. published on that level, Yep. like libraries eat that stuff up they love yep. that and dr machin's book um was mm-hmm. the life of dad yes um that for me was just a turning point in my understanding of of what i would call generational parenting just you know how we used to you would have to teach your kids to survive to like literally not die <laughs> you know that was what it was how do you go out in the you know and, and find food or how do you avoid you know the mountain lions or bear or whatever it is to moving to evolutionary and evolutionarily moving to, okay, well now we're not so worried about survival. Now we have to look at our financial needs so that we can pay for the food yeah. that we need. And then moving to beyond that, to more of an enlightened um, uh, mindset of what you need to teach your kids. Okay. Well, you, you figure out how to you figure out how to get paid, how to make a job. This way. What do we do about the existential crisis that like every generation zoo Z kid is going to have at some point <laughs> right. because of the, you know, the things they're facing in their day to day life. And it's just amazing that there are all of these books out there just kind of waiting, mm-hmm. you know, somebody's done the work for you. Just go find it. Well, you know? I mean, so you remember the book, what to expect when expecting, right? Like mm-hmm. how much of a phenomenon yeah, that is. So do Huge. you know, the, do you know the name Armin Brat? Do you know who that is? Mm. I don't know why. 
Okay. He's, he's put but, out a yeah, bunch of different books. So Armin brought, wrote the expectant father and oh, okay. the All ultimate right. guide for dads to be. I just got a hold of, he sent me because I was trying to get him on the show and it just, it's been crazy. Like he's so busy with stuff. It's been a little difficult trying to actually like get him. But at the one point we were like really close to getting him on the show and then communication just fell off, but he just released his fifth edition of that book. And he's mm. redone a lot of the spots in it because I mean, when he wrote it so long ago, he wrote it in like interjection to the what to expect when expecting because he mm -hmm. didn't like that just how it played so much to mom and not so much to dad and he yeah. was like he's like there's a lot of things that dads need to know and so he wrote it and then like i said he's just you know continued to update it over time mm -hmm. and i mean it's sold over like 1.5 million copies like mm -hmm. it's a very famous book and so um i actually you know I, for me it's not something that like I need because like my kids are all older, but anytime mm -hmm. like one of my friends or some, you know, a dad that I run into is like, Hey, I'm getting ready to have my first kid or whatever. I'm like, Hey, I got just the book for you to borrow. Like, I just right. I'm like here, go read it, bring it back to me when you're done with it or whatever. Like, if you want to talk about it, let's get a beer and talk or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've given the book out a couple different times to guys and they're like, man, that was such a good read. And I'm just like, yes, you're welcome. Like, yeah, <laughs> like right. that, that's right. cool. And it covers so many things. And I remember it now because I remember when we talked about getting him on the show previously, and that's where I, right. I'd, I'd heard his name. So, but give, having the ability to tell a new dad or an all, you know, expecting dad, anything that they're going to run into, because as a first timer, I've never done anything that I realized I knew so little about as, <laughs> as babies. I'm just like, I, 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 I mean, cause I had changed diapers. I had taken care of kids. I knew, you know, the ins and outs of a child, you know, okay. It cries. It needs something that kind of thing, but no idea about just how far reaching everything is when you have a child and they're in your care, even if it's, you know, you're working full time and you just come home and, you know, and, and give your wife some relief or what have you, you're still changing so much about your life, right? That, you know, how can you be prepared for that? Well, read a I, good book. I remember, um, like someone was like, what kind of advice would you give to like a first time dad? And I told him, I said, the, the advice I'm going to give you is going to sound kind of gruesome in a way, but honestly, I feel like it's a need to be said type of thing. And, and it's this, I understood like a few months in, maybe not even a few months in to why it is that you hear stories about parents shaking their babies and all this different stuff. Wow. Because one night I just had this like crazy, like, here's what was going on. Like I was holding my child first, firstborn. He would not stop crying. Mm -hmm. And he had been fed, he had been changed, he had, you know, all this stuff, like everything, like, he should be totally fine. But no, he just screaming his head off the entire time. And I'm holding him and I'm, you know, trying to do different things. And I just was so frustrated. And my, and my wife came in and was like, just put him down in the crib. And I just like mm -hmm. put him down and I walked out of the room and I just turned to my wife and I was like, I, I don't know what to do. Like, seriously, I am so frustrated. And I just turned to her and I said, I understand why it is that parents sometimes get so frustrated. They just almost like separate their mind. And it's like, I can shut this kid up if I just, you know, do something. And unfortunately it's like this horrible act. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I get it because you're just like, I just want them to be quiet. Mm -hmm. And to me, just the fact that you need to be able to give yourself that ability to just be like, I'm going to put this like very loud alarm clock down right now and walk away for a few minutes. Like they're fine. They're in the crib. They're cool. Everything's good. Yeah. Like they can scream their little head off. Like it'll be okay. Yeah. They'll take a minute to five, even there. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> if it gets... comes to between your sanity yes. <laughs> and that child being held for five minutes, you mm -hmm. need to take that five minutes. Yeah. Right. Get, get a breath. Like come back mm -hmm. to come back to level headedness and try again, you know, mm -hmm. and see where it's at. And I, that was the, that was the one thing that I told uh, this one dad and he was like, Oh, that sounds really scary. Like his kid was like on the way. And I'm like, 
I'm like, dude, there are just going to be those moments where like your kids are going to drive you to like the brink of insanity. And it just takes that moment of just saying, okay, pause. I'm going to walk away. Like yeah. they're fine, but I need to like distance myself for a few minutes and just bring myself back to a place of calmness. Because mm -hmm. if you're not calm, the kid's not going to be calm. Like they feel that, like that whole, like, whether it's skin to skin contact or just even like close by, like if your heart's racing, they can feel that. Yeah. And I think sometimes we forget, like, just like our body heats up, they're going to feel that like all these different mm -hmm. things. And when you finally recognize that, then you realize like, Oh, like I'm actually sort of like putting things out there that my kid's feeling. And that's sort of also part of the cause. So if I separate that might actually bring the level of insanity down on mm -hmm. all on, on the whole front. So, yeah, so that was my, that was like my big, that's like my big thing that I usually like to share with, with brand new dads. Cause I'm just like, you will get to that point. Like your wife will get your, your, your spouse, your partner will get to that mm -hmm. point. And it's okay to just be like, just put them down. Come here. Let me give you a hug <laughs> or yeah. whatever it is. <laughs> so, or go, uh, let me give you 30 minutes to go take a shower. Right. Oh, so I, yes. I cannot tell you how valuable it is in that on first, our, yeah, for that both first of you. six months. It's like, yep. it's like you have saved my life, the life mm -hmm. of myself and my child and my wife by coming over and watching my mm -hmm. screaming child while I take a shower. Yeah. Just have 30 minutes to myself. If it's a dad, if, if it's a dad that likes a beer, here's the shower beer. Go enjoy. Mm -hmm. Take a shower <laughs> beer and yeah, and just calm down. <laughs> Be quiet. Right. So yeah, mm. I mean, just just stuff like that. Like I it it's funny too because it wasn't until I really started getting to know guys in this organization and talking with them that I started gleaning this these little bits of information like mm -hmm on a more regular basis. So, you know, we come back to it almost every episode, every conversation, mm -hmm. all men need a men's group oh, of some yes. kind. You need a group, you need, you need, you need peers and then you need a mentor of some kind. Yep. That's something that I, I've never really felt that, that we have, uh, or I have in my life really accomplished, really thought of really known I needed, you know, and I think if, if anything else too, I would tell a new dad and, and a mature dad and an, and an ancient dad, do you have a men's group? Do you have a dad's group? Yeah. Do you have other dads you can go talk to? Do you have a mentor? Do you have someone that you're mentoring even? Yeah. Because all of that interaction is so very valuable because that peer group is where you learn all of those little tricks, you know, mm -hmm. like I keep. Oh, I've said this before, I'm sure, but I keep a one gallon Ziploc bags in my car and I kept them in my van, you know, in my truck. I should say. So I, I always have them because if we're driving down the road and we're on a trip, a kid's going to get sick. He needs to throw up. Yep. Here's your bag. Just hold this, throw up in it, zip it closed when you're done. <clears throat> That's that to me, that has saved my vehicle for where sure. Did you, where did you get you that know? idea from? I got that on another podcast. The, oh. uh, the, the, uh, sad pod. Oh, sad pod back was. in the day. Yeah. Guys in California. Yeah. And, um, if they're listening, I'm sorry, guys, I forgot your name because that's what I do. <laughs> They've been gone for quite a while. So it's, yeah. it's okay. I miss those guys. Yeah. Last time I saw them was Minneapolis, but, uh, oh, wow. yeah, they got, they also got into, uh, from what I understand, some jobs and said, yeah. well, I, I have skills and I'm a dad. Can I go? Yeah. Into Wait, was television it television production? What have you? Was it the sad podcast or was that the at home dad podcast? The at home dad podcast. Okay. Sad like, pod was the older one. You're right. Sad pod is the older one. Yeah. That one, the last time I heard from those guys was uh, Portland. So that's why I was like, Minneapolis, who was that? <laughs> but yeah, man, I mean, just all the, like, well, I, well, I mean, I those we, guys, I'm those guys. I was on sad pod. You were not. I was on one sad of the hosts. Pod? On sad mm -hmm. pod? Really? Mm -hmm. mm, okay. Well with david uh McEwen, yeah McEwen. yeah yeah mm -hmm. McEw McEwen. McEwen, yeah the australian yeah. guy yeah yeah i remember that's that's uh that's how i got my introduction into the national at home dad network in some ways so um but no like so you're talking about you know to get our podcast straight man we're getting all confused it's okay um <laughs> so you were talking though about having a having a some sort of men's group type of thing and 
I think it's interesting. You run into some guys who are like, nah, man, like I don't have any, and it's like, what's your life? Like, are you angry a lot? Like, do you feel mm -hmm. like you have an outlet to talk to somebody? And you know, as soon as you ask that question, you can see they're like, oh crap, I've been called out, you know? <laughs> and you're just like, you've got to have somebody like, you can't just bottle it up. Like I bet more times than not, I would put money down on this. If you don't have somebody to talk to, especially another guy, mm -hmm. I bet, I bet you're getting angry quicker. You're blowing up on your kids more than you'd like to. And your wife or your partner is trying to figure out what to do, but also walking on eggshells because they don't want to even take a chance at lighting that powder keg. And it's one of those deals where it's like, come on, dude, like, it's not that big a deal. Go, go find some new, go find a new friend for crying out loud, <laughs> like for real. So that's, and that's what I like about like the dad, dad's night out stuff. You, you know, you, you get guys that just come and hang out. I get some guys that come and hang out and they don't say a word half the time. Um, or they wait till the end and then you start seeing them to like start, start talking like they feel comfortable at that point. And then they show up to the next one after that and they keep coming back. And it's just one of those, all right, you're, you're a slow, you're a slow cook, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get you there kind of deal. So yeah. I, I highly, I highly agree with you on the fact like you got to find, you got to find a connection with other, with other dads for sure. Mm -hmm. So did you find it? So I just want to point out because I'm going to and I can put this in the show notes if you'd like. Sad Pod, the Stay at Home Dad podcast, season one, episode one, the importance of online community to stay at home dads. Mm -hmm. And this inaugural episode, David McPhee of McPhee. Sunny Palm Coast, Florida, Craig Levine of Parkland, South Florida, Danny Mercer of Georgia, and Maddie McGraw, who's in California. Man. Discuss. Yeah. And I hosted one of them, I think a summer, summer show or something like that it's been a long time so do you remember but, what, um, were you on there when they were doing the live shows like through the one I, there was some weird we app. were all on the phone no no i know that but like you guys went from just recording and publishing to some points you would actually on live and there was this app that it was going through and you could actually listen to it live and send messages and david would from time to time actually like read the comments that were on there. And I would sit in my bedroom and listen to it with Corey next to me. And we would die laughing like throughout <laughs> the whole thing. And I would from time to time, like put in a message or whatever. And I remember David for the longest time being like, Oh, like our one fan Brock is listening to this kind of deal. Sweet. <laughs> so yeah. Cause I mean, I was, I went on a camping trip with college students when Portland was going on because I couldn't make it there. And I had just become a stay at home dad. And I literally sat in my hammock during our free time and listened to the show while it was happening from Portland. So, <laughs> yeah. So it was always funny. Like, and I would message them and be like, yep. I'm like, I got my free time. I'm in my hammock just listening to you guys. <laughs> just, just, just letting it go. That's right. So, but I love that. Like, I mean, there's still to this day, like there are guys that listen to our show and comment stuff, you know, in different ways. Like we'll get an email or somebody will leave a message about something and, you know, oh, hey, like I just happen to be listening to your show. Um, I think it was cool um, through one guy on Discord. Uh, he reached out through the info at at home dad, uh, org, and was like, hey, I found you guys through a book. And I'm like, oh, really? Which book was that? And he was like, the, the ultimate stay-at-home dad guide. And I was like, oh, by Shannon Carpenter? And he said, yeah. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. And he was like, I'm not on Facebook. I, I loathe Facebook. How mm -hmm. can I connect with you guys? Are you guys on any other forum, any other platforms? And I'm like, actually, yes. We have a Discord server for, um, for those who want to be on that versus on Facebook and it's growing mm -hmm. regularly. And he was like, Oh, I want in. And so like, I put him in there and he's been talking ever since. It was so funny because I called Shannon and I was like, Hey Shannon, I was like, there's this guy. And like, explain the whole thing. He's like, Oh man. He's like, that's so awesome. He's like, that just, he's like, you're just giving me all kinds of like good, good vibes. I'm like, awesome, man. I'm like, so happy for you. And he's like, I went in the discord channel too. And I was like, okay, cool. So I gave him this stuff. It was so funny. He hopped on, he started talking and I was like, Hey Shannon, what's going on? And the guy was just like, Oh, Hey, like, 
like and then, <laughs> <laughs> it was like a total like fanboy thing and i'm just like yeah it's hilarious to watch happen through like just chat <laughs> yeah yeah i do love those moments i just it's amazing too when you because you meet basically what would be considered your hero or you know a dad that you really are inspired by and it's like look i'm seriously yeah. just he's a dude that changed diapers that's you know he, there's no difference he's not a superstar and and i what well, i'm saying about not talking about shannon because i think we all know shannon's kind of a superstar <laughs> but for the rest of us you know right when well, these guys, especially from, especially if you've known them on the discord or another on, you know, Facebook or whatever you met, you have, you know, virtually met them, meeting yeah. them in person, same as it would be with anything, but it's kind of one of those things that you really don't know how to put a face mm -hmm. to the voice or a face to the text. And then you see them and you're like, Oh, 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 okay. I didn't know you were seven and a half feet tall. I, I never thought about, you know, didn't recognize you. So yeah, it's really well, and, cool. And he, he was funny too, because he actually, um, what did he do? Oh, he's from like this little tiny place in Canada. And mm -hmm. he had gotten a hold of his book and he was like, man, it was just life changing for me. Like, this has been so great. And it was funny because I said, well, I'm like not to toot my own horn, but uh, I'm on like page two. And he's like, what? And he must've been reading it on like a Kindle or something. He's like, I got to scroll back and look at that. I was like, actually, if you look through the guys that are in this group, you're going to find a lot of names that are in that book. And he's like, oh that's really cool and like that's the thing i love man there's just all mm -hmm. these different ways that connecting like that takes place so mm -hmm. yeah i can't say enough good things my dog is freaking out right now over something <laughs> <laughs> my kids are doing the same yeah they came over and knocked on the door a minute ago i'm like yeah I told you <laughs> i get one hour a, a freaking week man the alarm has back not gone off, off yet yeah <laughs> their alarm's gone off i'm sure I'm like, dad i'm sure it's been an hour i'm still trying to figure out how to get to the escape room leave me alone so <laughs> <laughs> that comes down to I'm gonna so, need more duct tape well before we go i do want to say to everybody happy father's day this is going to of course you know air after father's day but hopefully you had a good father's day um hopefully you got to enjoy father's eve i know you're going up to hang out with the guys in the twin oh, cities yeah. um, I been I, in yeah so i got a sleepover i know eric's really excited he was talking about it last <laughs> night so uh yeah and you know just honestly i hope that it all is you know a lot of fun for everybody and that they got something out of it so um other than that working on getting some uh, some guests on here soon um definitely i talked to like i said like the 80 year old lady that i talked to um she's setting me up with a guy part of their organization that lives in like algeria who wants to talk with us about fatherhood and what's going on over there and i'm like that cool. sounds cool yeah uh, so we might have to record that in the middle of the day though because there are six hours That's, ahead of us <laughs> i'll be here you, you want to set that up I'll, i'd uh, happily yeah. do that because i yeah, like yeah. the to know more about because the differences in culture and society and everything yeah. that changes and how you deal with being a dad. I'd love to hear it. Definitely. So, yeah. so I'll get that lined up and uh, a few others. And then also too, keep an eye out. There's going to be some uh, home dad con uh, announcements coming out here real soon. Uh, speaker announcements. Um, we've, we've been building graphics. I've, I'm, I'm really excited to get them pushed out because uh, it's getting, it's getting close. I think we're, uh, yeah, it uh, is. We're, we're just over a hundred days. That's mm -hmm. crazy. <laughs> that, I think there's like a hundred and eight. It's, like, yeah. It'd be like a hundred days by the time uh, this airs. <laughs> it's like, finally, finally, it's coming. Go to home dad con. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> finally home dad con has come. <laughs> That's right. Phoenix too. Never been to Phoenix. I know. Right. Me neither. It's going to make today look like a walk in the park. <laughs> going to make today feel like today <laughs> <'Cause> it's <laughs> really hot out right now yeah it is oh my gosh all right well with that y'all have a good week and uh, we'll yeah, uh, talk to you next week <laughs> good night everybody i'm a dad that's what i do